Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this, the brand new shoe from Hoka Ononi, the Carbon X2. So sit back, relax, let's get stuck into this and see if this is a good shoe for you. Right, here we go. Really excited to bring this one to you. So first things first, we'll have a quick chat about some facts and figures about the shoe. We'll have a quick chat about what's changed between the outgoing model and the new version two. And then chat about some of my likes and my dislikes. And then yeah, see the conclusion and if it's gonna be going into the rotation. So first things first, Hoka are pitching this as a lightweight carbon plated racing shoe. And yeah, for me, this, my, my particular size is coming at 290 grams, which is a little bit heavier than the outgoing side. Bizarrely on their website, they say this is lighter, but for me, it's a little bit heavier. There's a five millimeter drop between the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe. The back is a 39 mil, and the front is obviously five millimeters less than that at 34. It's a neutral shoe, so not too much support, and it is also classified as quite a responsive race shoe. So not really one for your easy slow miles, one to get up and put in some good speed for sessions and races as well. For me, if I'm looking at some race distances for the shoe, this is gonna be a half marathon upwards. For shorter than that, if you're a big Hoka fan, something like the Rocket X is gonna be perfect for that sort of thing. But this is more of your endurance shoe, so half marathon, marathons and ultras, but very much on the road. I wouldn't wanna be taking this too far off the road. Some very light trail, you're gonna be fine as long as it's dry, but this is very much a road shoe. This shoe was true to size for me, so I got this in my regular UK size 12. I think if I was really being nitpicky, I probably would have preferred to go half a size down, but the true to size was all right. I think a half size down would have felt a little bit nicer, and it's a little bit more snug for that ratio fit. And finally, let's talk about price. Well, this cost me, and I did buy this as always, 100% with my money, 160 pounds here in the UK. Bizarrely, I did buy this direct from Hoka. They actually canceled my order, which was a little bit frustrating after I pre-ordered it. So I had to then reorder it from Sports Shoes and it came through absolutely fine a few days later. <laughs> So there are three main differences between the outgoing model version one and this new one coming in. Slightly different aesthetics, obviously at the back, you've got this slightly sort of redesigned um, heel, which is really gonna help if you're a heel striker. We'll come onto that a little bit later on. They've got a new mesh and tongue design as well. And we'll come onto that into in some of the positives. They've used a softer, lighter foam, the same foam that is in the Rocket X. And they've slightly changed the position of the carbon plate in the shoe, which is gonna help with your toe off a little bit more propulsion through the shoe as well. So starting with the lights. Well, this was a really comfortable shoe straight out the box. Had no issues with any sort of heel slip or anything. I really like what they've done at the back of this shoe with this sort of flared heel design. Heel feeling really nice and locked down, very secure, no slipping about at all. No hot spots, I have suffered from that with a little bit with some other Hoka shoes. But yeah, very good. I really like this new mesh material upper. Lots of width as well at the front to uh, yeah, so you get your foot splay nice in there. I think if you, unless you have a really extremely wide foot, you're gonna be, you're gonna have plenty of room in the toe box here. So for me, overall, very, very comfortable to running out the box. As I say, no issues with any sort of slipping, hot spots, blisters or anything like that. Just all are good, solid. <laughs> Just a quick break, guys. We've got lots of lovely Hoka shoes here. Let me know what's your favorite. Are you a fan of the Hoka brand? I guess you are because you have been watching this video. But yeah, what is your favorite Hoka shoe out there? If you're enjoying this review, please hit the like button and let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite Hoka shoe? Moving on to the second positive, which was this shoe's performance over the long runs. So yeah, I've really enjoyed taking this on that long run. I feel it's very stable. It feels nice and wide and you're getting a really good solid strike every time. And I think where this shoe is really gonna shine, where some of the more 
Other sort of carbon plated road shoes is in that marathon and also longer distance as well, up to sort of road ultras. I actually bought version one specifically to train and to run the Comrades 90K road ultra marathon. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But I think if I was going to be doing it this year, hopefully, fingers crossed that will happen, this might well be the race shoe that I would choose for something like that. My third light is this new mesh upper. I found it really nice and breathable. Yes, we're here training in the UK at the moment. It's not very warm your feet aren't heating up too much but i've just found it very very comfortable my feet have been feeling really nice a nice temperature as i'm running along and off the back of that this new tongue design here i think they've they've really worked really worked well and it's just as i said slightly similar to point one it's just really that really nice lockdown feel feels really nice and secure you don't have to make loads of little adjustments it's just really good and solid <laughs> So my first negative is this shoes really what it's designed for a sort of a poppy high performance fast shoe it's just not there for me it feels very sort of dead as i say if you're looking at a really endurance marathon plus shoe you're not always going to want that poppy feel all the time but it's for me it just has felt a little bit dead a little bit just like i've got a brick on the end of my foot bizarrely i just didn't feel that in the rocket x this felt really nice and fast it turned over really nicely and it was a good poppy shoe but it's just that's you're really going to struggle to run a marathon distance in that with how it's set up it's really aggressive this is less aggressive for those ultras but i'm just not getting that nice poppy performance i'm not running along i feel like i'm the one doing all the effort i'm coming like come on shoe you can do some work here as well so yeah it's quite hard to quantify that exactly but when i've been doing some reps and some faster work in it i've just looked down the splits just aren't that great uh, for the effort that I feel I'm putting in, especially when I'm comparing it to the alternatives from other manufacturers. Moving on to the second negative. And this is a negative specifically sort of for me, but as a midfoot striker, I just feel this as similar to the first point there is really not working. But as a caveat, if you are a heel striker with this new heel design here and you're rolling through the shoe, when I have been testing this shoe out, I've changed my form a little bit, it has felt really poppy. So on the flip side, it's kind of an odd thing to say, say but I feel this shoe is actually performing better as a heel striking shoe than as a midfoot or forefoot striking shoe. So for me, that's a negative, but for you, it might well be a positive as a heel striker. This big, sort of quite bulbous, um, heel area if you're if you're striking here you've got lots of nice cushion and support there so this might be a positive might be a negative depending on if you're a forefoot or a heel striker but if you're a heel striker i think you're going to get a lot of performance out of this shoe but if a midfoot striker for me it is very much one to avoid Right, let's wrap this up. What do we think of this shoe overall? Is it sort of something we're really keeping or not? Well, for me, I think if you're a heel striker, you could get a lot of performance out of this shoe and it can do really, really well for you. But for me, sitting here as a, as a midfoot striker, it just hasn't really worked for me. So it's not gonna be making it in to my rotation, surprise, surprise. But as a caveat to that, if I think if I did have a big, long endurance ultra road marathon to train for, I would be li I'd liking to do some long marathon pace runs in this shoe, and I think it will perform and deliver very, very well. I've had a lot of problems with my favorite shoe, the Nike uh, Tempo uh, Next Percent with the AirPods busting. You haven't got anything to worry about like that in a shoe like this. So yeah, it could do really well for that longer training run and that race day shoe if you're gonna be spending a lot of time in it. Also, if you were just wanting to dip your toe into the carbon shoe market, this could be a good one to go for. You can be doing all of your training runs in this. This is not something you just, is just gonna be for race day, which a lot of carbon shoes are. They're just ones to take out for your, for the celebration at the end to get that run done. But you could do all of your training in this. It's gonna, it's gonna absorb it all really well. And then, yeah, come race day, you can take it out again. So yeah, it's a good investment, potentially good value for money because you don't need to buy lots of different shoes. This will do it all pretty well. But, for, but as I say, in my opinion, if, if you've got the budget to get a full on race day shoe and then something to train in, you're gonna get a lot more performance out of those two options. So there we have it guys. That is the full review of the Hoka Onione Carbon X 2. 
too. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, it wasn't the shoe I was hoping it was gonna be, but hopefully you found this video useful and yeah, let me know down in the comments what you're going, what is happening in your world, how your training is going. I'd love to catch up and see you down there. So for me, I'm off to get some more training back into my routine and I will see you very soon in the next one.